Hello everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathy Super Sessions by Dr. Jagos. Today I'll be doing Roberts Chapter 29, that is disease classification, that is psychosis. So this video is divided into total three parts. I'll be presenting the first part today. Psychosis is generally understood to be a gonorrheal poison. We should make the distinction clear between gonorrhea and psychosis. So, Robert says the psychosis is generally considered a gonorrheal poison. And he said that we have to distinguish between gonorrhea and psychosis. So, gonorrhea is the acute infection of the gonococci, which takes from 5 to 10 days to develop, to develop a urethritis after an exposure. So, basically, after an exposure, the gonorrheal infection is there, which is acute, which is due to the gonococci, and it takes 5 to 10 days for urethritis to develop. During this incubation period, it is purely an infection. The local manifestations are thrown out outward by nature at the point of attack as a feeling of displeasure or the vital energy to the infection. So whatever local manifestations are there, they are thrown out because of the feeling of discomfort of the vital energy. So the vital energy gets distorted or it gets deviated and the local manifestations are exhibited. If the gonorrhea is thoroughly and completely cured, practically no psychosis ever develops. So this is very important. If gonorrhea is completely and thoroughly cured, practically no psychosis develops. So basically gonorrhea is a gonorrheal infection which is acute, whereas psychosis occurs when the gonorrheal discharge is being suppressed. So psychosis is established after a suppressed gonorrhea when the acute infection is driven in upon the vital energy by external methods of suppression. So whenever there is gonorrhea and if it is not completely cured or if suppression takes place because of the medicine given, then the secondary psychosis will occur. If then it then becomes a stigmatic stigma, a systematic stigma permeating every living cell, living cell of the organism. So what happens once it gets suppressed, it creates a systematic stigma that each and every system of the body may be affected or a stigma will be there on the different systems of the body and it also permeates every living cell of the organism. It transmits its deadly destructive forces to the offspring and also it is transmitted to the offspring. In the original individual is it retains the full destructive power and impregnates the mother of the child. So this also shows that it crosses the placental barrier and it infects the child. The suppressed gonorrhea infection first shows itself in the attacking the blood and producing an anemic condition and a general cataract condition is set up. So the first, the first and foremost symptom of the suppressed gonorrhea will be the blood, which, which, which causes anemia. And often an inflammatory rheumatism also develops. Inflammation follows the soft tissue and changes in the fibers of the muscle. So besides attacking the blood, the joints are also affected or the inflammatory stage develops and you're getting inflammatory stage in the joints, in the soft tissues, as well as of the fibers of the muscles. In fact, the whole organism becomes involved. Sometimes stasis develops into the lymphatics, there is a swelling in the groin followed the, following the suppression and inflammation in the prostatic gland. So even the lymphatics are, are, are involved in which they become swollen and also the prostate gland, gland becomes inflamed and enlarged. So this is the uh, development of the secondary psychosis. Seldom do we get these conscious symptoms when the initial gonorrhea is cured by the homeopathically indicated level. So these secondary symptoms will not be developed if primarily the proper homeopathic treatment is taken when the patient in, when the patient gets the uh, is exposed to gonorrhea and gets urethritis so if proper constitution homeopathic treatment is given during that time a full cure will take place but in most of the cases the suppression needs to take place as a result of which the second symptoms of the psychosis came up if there is any constitutional taint it is in the mild form however robert says that initially when the gonorrhea is there 
and when it is treated homeopathically, initially it is in the mild form or it may have a slight constitutional taint or a slight st psychotic stigma may remain on the body, but it is in a very mild form. If it's a true gonorrhea infection, the true gonorrhea will be transmitted. But if it has reached the secondary stage, the contracting party will develop the condition at the same stage as that, as that of the infector. The secondary stage usually comes on three months after the first stage has subsided and may, de and may be delayed a full year. So the secondary stage generally comes on after three months and it may be delayed right, right till one full year. It has to be remembered that the secondary and tertiary symptom psychosis can be entirely eradicated by the homeopathic treatment. So, Robert again reminds us that it is not, it, it's, it's nothing to worry. The secondary and the tertiary symptoms of the psychosis can be absolutely eradicated by the homeopathic treatment. In the secondary period of psychosis, almost every disease that may arise takes on an inflammatory nature in some form. So, whenever there is secondary psychosis, Whatever disease arises, it takes a, it takes on an inflammatory nature in some form, in some form or the other. It may be acute, subacute, or chronic, and it may vary from mild to very malignant fever. So there may be different stages of the disease. You may get an acute, a subacute, or a chronic disease, and it may vary from a well, very mild to a malignant fever. Now let us illustrate this with an example for better understanding. So now Robert will give us one example in order to understand better what he's trying to tell us. We know how frequently we see cases where soon after marriage, a perfectly healthy, robust girl begins to drop and becomes ill. So a perfectly healthy, robust girl after marriage becomes ill. This is because the secondary symptom of psychosis has been transmitted to the extensive mucous surfaces of the female organ. So why does she fall ill? Because of the secondary symptoms of psychosis, which have been transmitted on the surfaces of the female organs. Oftentimes, it is a single organ that becomes involved, like the ovary, with its cystic manifestations, or a fallopian tube manifest inflammation. So, Robert says that generally, a single organ may become involved, like the ovary, along with its cystic manifestation. So again, cyst is it's a psychotic manifestation, or a fallopian tube may, may manifest itself by inflammation. Or you may get inflammation of the fallopian tube, that is salpingitis. Again, they may, be, they may show a very anemic state of blood, and blood also may show a very anemic state. When this anemic condition arises, it affects every part of the organism, coming on gradually, slowly, until the whole system is permeated. And this anemic condition, it arises gradually, and it spreads slowly and gradually towards the whole system. She becomes pallid, drawn, puffy. There is no stamina in the muscle. So she becomes pale, she, so the face puffs up, and there is no stamina left. The anemic condition arises from this stigma because psychosis destroys the red blood cells through imperfect oxidation of the food. So imperfect oxidation of the food will give rise to this anemic condition as a result of which the red blood cells are destroyed. Due to the previously existing taint in her own system, she may develop diabetes, rice disease, or numerous other diseases of this type. So even the psychotic taint may give rise to other diseases like diabetes or rice disease besides the one which she was suffering from. So that's all today for this part. Part two will be coming up soon. I hope you like this video. Thank you.